That children must be protected and the criminal justice system plays a key role in ensuring their safety. Now, to protect children's rights, South Africa has implemented laws such as the Children's Act of 2005 and the Sexual Offences Act of 1957. However, child abuse, including physical, sexual and emotional abuse, remains a serious concern. And the question remains, is the criminal justice system in South Africa doing enough to protect children? We have Luke Lambrecht, head of advocacy at Women and Men Against Child Abuse, joining us on the line via Zoom. Good morning to you, Luke, and thank you so much for joining us. Give us a sense of what the advocacy group uh, does in terms of reaching the most vulnerable in society when it comes to violation of their rights. So there's two primary services. The first is direct service delivery. So, for example, um, assessments, therapy, um, helping people get access to the criminal justice system, and sort of, you know, helping navigate a really complex thing when children are hurt. The other component, the advocacy side, is to point out where there are deficits in the system and attempt to rectify those through um, advocacy, impact litigation, um, obviously, you know, kind of appealing directly to government for changes, and then also just being within the system to support both the system and the young people and families who have to enter it safely. Yeah, so is the system really that broken in the sense that we've lost confidence even uh, when it comes to reporting cases where people would rather shy away because they have now a double trauma of having to relive uh, their experience when it comes to the justice system? There's absolutely no doubt. So the first thing to understand about the criminal justice system is it is a system not designed for children at all. So it's a system that is designed by adults, run by adults, for adults. And in fact, if you as a child want to access that system, you simply cannot access it without the assistance of an adult agent. So, for example, if you are being abused by the person who's meant to care and protect for you, your parent, and you go to a police station and you want to make a statement and open a case, they're not even going to listen to you. So you need to then find another agent to assist you, which would be an agent like, say, a teacher or sort of a coach or a priest, someone you know who has a relationship with you will then help you access that system. Those people are then very resistant to getting involved in the system because they fear needing to come and testify and people see the adversarial nature of the system and the fact that if you go to that system and you people are innocent until proven guilty you as the person making the claim are assumed to be lying until it can be proven otherwise and as a result you get cross-examined and that cross-examination tends to be quite brutal because all the defense has to prove is doubt and the state has to prove this, the case beyond a reasonable doubt so it's an incredibly onerous system and not designed for children but also there, there are many reports, I was just referencing one from the University of Free State that says the criminal justice system cannot deal uh, with crime on its own. It is a societal responsibility. If we look at the contact crimes alone, the statistics would suggest that 80% of these happen with somebody who is in close proximity or somebody that is even a family member who ought to be protecting uh, children. Look, So this is something that as a society, it is an indictment for the failure of protecting children children and also not reporting for those uh, that may be sitting with a family secret and not wanting uh, to, to, to report it. Look, I think that's an extremely valid point. So the criminal justice system is the end of the line. It is when things go wrong and there's an attempt to punish somebody for wrongdoing. What we should be doing, number one, is raising people who don't hurt children. I mean, that's that's where we would need to start. And then, then secondly, you know, we adults would need to make one simple decision to end all child abuse, and that's the decision to not harm children. Now, why do we not, um, you know, abide by that? Why do we harm children? Well, simply because we don't value them. You know, for all the talk of child participation and child rights and putting children at the centre of things, it simply doesn't happen. I mean, a really telling example is you go out and do talks to children where we say, if someone tries to touch you on your private parts, you must say no. Nobody encourages their children to say no to them. And your statistic on social contact crimes being 80% for children, it's upward of 98%. So very few children get hurt by strangers. It's mostly by people who are supposed to care for them.
Okay, and uh, people that may not have the resources, i.e. access to data or internet, phone lines, etc., far-flung places, I I'm sure the, the picture is even more bleak uh, than, than those that are in more peri-urban and urban areas. Look, we've had cases where we've had to get the Human Rights Commission involved because I will phone the police, they'll say to me, what's the address? I'll phone social development, please don't visit, what's the address? I say, these people don't have an address. They are ghosts. They live in informal settlements where there is no address. And secondly, the children's births haven't even been registered. I mean, we deal with cases, and, and as in particular, I've just dealt with, well, we're dealing with one at the moment, where you, you have children who are just basically discarded by their parents, where their births are not celebrated and their deaths aren't mourned. So, you know, if you look at the, the, the basic um, sort of danger to all children, is it is unplanned unwanted pregnancies with people ill prepared to parent children and we know that poverty limits resources and we know it limits resources to child rearing and child protection and access to the system we call them aces or adverse childhood experiences they are multiple and they become exponential in the you know the detrimental um, impact it has on children's development some uh, uh, sobering truths there uh, that you're speaking about, Luke, I think that we need to reflect on as a society in general. But thank you indeed for your time. That's Luke Lambrecht, uh, Head of Advocacy at Women and Men Against Child Abuse. You're welcome to share your views on social media. Really disheartening yeah. you know, to think about. As you were saying, children's births that are not celebrated mm. and their deaths that are not mourned because mm. they were never wanted. Yeah, and also child contact crimes. It's not even strangers. I think there's a perception that it's uh, this uh, boogeyman, this uh, person in the dark it's not its family members uh, and people that they know which is the most worrying for me as well thanks to Luke for his time